message wasn't about, you know, like the big heroic things? What if it was about the small everyday stuff, the acts of like defiance or even just kindness? Interesting. That's kind of what we're looking at today, this deep dive. Well, it's a journey. We're diving into the world of this surgeon, Dr. Samer Attar. He splits his time between Chicago, or, you know, normal life, and some of the most, well, dangerous war zones out there. Wow. Yeah, intense, right? And he wrote this piece for the New York Times, really powerful stuff, all about his experience. Oh, I think I saw that one. Yeah. Courage, resilience, finding meaning and suffering, that one. Exactly. It's, well, it's packed with insights. I'm looking forward to this. So we've got Dr. Attar, right? On one hand, he's working in Chicago, state-of-the-art hospital, you know the deal. Right. But then on the other hand, he's volunteering in places like Ukraine. I can't even imagine. It takes Serious courage, right. And he sees things, treats injuries yeah. that most people wouldn't even, I mean, they can't even fathom it. Yeah, it's hard to wrap your head around that kind of yeah. reality, I guess. He describes patients, uh, their faces disfigured by shrapnel, missing limbs, <laughs> the brutal reality, you know. Wow. There's even this story about an opera singer who stepped on a mine, lost his foot, just like that. Oh, gosh. It makes you think, you know, what matters when everything's on the line. Absolutely. Makes you really put things in perspective. And he connects these experiences in Ukraine to his work in Syria. Oh, right. With SAMS. You know about them. Yeah, the Syrian American Medical Society. They provide medical aid, disaster zones, really crucial work. Okay, so they're in war zones, but it's more than just like bandages and stuff, right? Oh, absolutely. It's setting up mobile clinics, training local staff, getting those medical supplies where they need to go. Which can't be easy in those conditions. It's demanding, dangerous, really highlights the uh i guess the commitment of these doctors nurses everyone they're alleviating suffering no matter what it's incredible makes you wonder what makes someone do that put themselves in that kind of danger yeah he could be in chicago easy life exactly and he talks about this as people ask him two questions all the time one is why are you going when you don't owe them anything right like it's not your fight but then others say why would you leave your home your life to risk it all out there two sides of the same coin <laughs> right but both get at something deeper exactly so it's not just about duty or i don't know obligation he calls it bearing witness bearing witness yeah showing up acknowledging the suffering like his presence itself just being there it goes beyond medical care you know mm -hmm. it's about more than fixing bodies it's a human need connection empathy when you're dealing with trauma like that just powerful stuff and we can connect with that even if we haven't lived through anything similar mm. that need for connection for someone to just be there for you yeah it's universal totally but this level of commitment it's got to come at a price right of course he even warns his students guard your souls like this work it can break you down he's seen it firsthand burnout compassion fatigue even ptsd he lists the realities fear the possibility of dying, just the sheer emotional weight of it all. Heavy stuff. But even with all that darkness, he finds lessons in it. Like what? Listening, truly listening to his patients, checking his ego, realizing he's not there to be a hero. He's there to serve. It's humbling in a way, isn't it? Absolutely. Operating with limited resources, making these huge decisions under pressure, but never losing sight of the patient. That's Remarkable. It makes you think like, if he can handle that, what are we capable of, right? Just with our own inner, I don't know, strength. It's remarkable, yeah. The human spirit, you know, yeah. how adaptable we are. We rise to the occasion. Find strength when it matters. Exactly. And it's more than just being a doctor, right? Absolutely. It's bigger than that. More compassionate, empathetic. Exactly. And that's where uh, he shifts gears in the article. Oh, right. From those intense scenes in Ukraine to something totally different. A yeah. patient back in Chicago. The woman with cancer. Yeah, or what a contrast. Right. 35 years old. Pregnant. 20 weeks. And then the diagnosis. Awful. But then it gets worse, doesn't it? Like she can't even pay her phone bill. Can't catch a break. Heartbreaking. But her OB, they step up, pay the bill mm. themselves. Wow. Small act, right. But it speaks volumes, empathy, even in the everyday. And that's the parallel he's drawing, isn't it? Those big acts of courage, the war zone stuff. Yeah. And then this quiet heroism, everyday life. So it's not about the scale of the thing, but the heart behind it. Exactly. Courage takes many forms. Could be a doctor saving lives in a war zone. Right. Or 
being that doctor who goes the extra mile for a patient here, not just medicine, but listening, being there for them. It's a good reminder, you know, you don't need a war to make a difference. Sometimes the small stuff, that's the most powerful. So like you don't need a war to find courage. It's, you know, it's everywhere if we just, I don't know. It's about opening your eyes, right? yeah. seeing it in the everyday. And that's what makes this article, I don't know. It sticks with you. Yeah, it's not just, oh, look at these crazy events. It's like, he wants us to to find that in ourselves. Find the extraordinary in the ordinary. Okay, but how do we do that? Like, we're listening to this, right? It's a good story, but how do we actually use it? That's the big question, right? He doesn't give us a map or anything. No, definitely not. But he leaves us with something, like a, a call to action, I guess. Okay. He's saying, look, we're all connected. We can suffer, sure, but we can also, you know, have compassion. Those are both part of being human. So we can ignore it, the bad stuff. Or, or we can lean in, let it teach us something mm -hmm. about ourselves, about being better. It's like even if we feel powerless, you know, with all the suffering out there, we still have a choice. We always have a choice. And choosing hope, choosing to actually do something, even a small thing. That can be its own kind of courage. Absolutely. Well, that about wraps it up for this deep dive from, well, war zone operating rooms to a doctor helping with a phone bill. Courage takes many forms. It really does. Dr. Attar's story, I think, it challenges us to find that courage to show up for other people, for ourselves, even when things are tough. Makes you think. 